From our lateral view for the overhead squat assessment, what we're looking to identify is that the client can maintain a neutral position with the hips. The common compensation is an anterior pelvic tilt. Whenever we set up for the overhead squat assessment, we want to align the five kinetic chain checkpoints. So the feet need to be hip width apart and pointing straight ahead. The knees, to be, the knees need to be aligned in between the second and third toe and the hips need to be neutral. So what I'll do is have Claire find her neutral position. Let's go ahead and place your hands on your hips. Now from here, arch your back as far as you can and then round as far as you can. And now go try to do that rounding without bending the knees. And now go somewhere in the middle. That's her neutral position. In the overhead squat, she should be able to maintain her neutral. What we're looking for is to see if that changes as she goes down in the squat. Now let's reach both hands overhead. We want to be sure they're all the way overhead. Now from here, she's going to perform about five squats down to the height of approximately a normal chair. So go ahead and squat. And we immediately start to see that arch in the low back. We can come up. We'll have her do a couple of more. Again, we can see there it is. And we'll just do one more and you can come all the way up. So if we immediately see the compensation, there's no real reason to have her continue squatting. We see the compensation and then we can move on with our protocols. Now in the anterior pelvic tilt, the muscles that are going to be overactive are going to be the hip flexors. So they're below the hips on the anterior side of the body. The hip flexors would simply be the TFL, which will be positioned approximately here. In the quadriceps, we have the rectus femoris. So the rectus femoris is the only quad that crosses both the knee and the hip. If it's mechanically shortened, it can help to pull the hips into that position. And we also have the psoas that runs from the spine down towards the hip. Those three in the anterior side of the body would be overactive. And if you could go ahead and spin around for me. On the posterior side of the body for overactive, what we would have is the erector spinae that sets here. So again, if she arches her low back, those muscles there shorten. Now for underactive muscles, it's typically the muscles on the other side of the joint. So we have for underactive, go ahead and stay here. So the gluteus maximus and gluteus medius is going to be underactive. It's not able to stabilize the position of the hips. We also see that the hamstrings here are typically underactive. And if you'll spin around and face the camera here, we have our rectus abdominis and some of our intrinsic core muscles that are also underactive. Now, an overactive muscle is not a strong muscle. It's just simply a muscle that's doing too much. And an underactive muscle is not necessarily a weak muscle. It's just a muscle that's not doing enough. So in the anterior pelvic tilt, we know the hip flexors and the erector spinae is overactive. And we know that the glutes, the hamstrings, and some of those abdominal muscles are underactive. Thank you.